Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, FossyBot was kind enough to send me this 2400 watt solar generator to review. This is a UPS solar generator, which means uninterrupted power supply. And I'll go ahead and explain to you what that is here in a minute. However, it has a couple of features on it that I haven't seen on other solar generators. But first, let me go ahead and show you what it comes with. Pretty standard stuff. It comes with your user's manual, which you really want to read. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I always recommend that you read this first before you even start messing around with anything that you buy. It comes with a cord, a charging cord. And I'm excited because this doesn't have a charging block. This is a UPS, uninterrupted power supply. And again, I'll go over that with you here in a minute. So it comes with just this single cord. It comes with a input for solar that hooks up to Anderson connectors. And it also comes with your garden variety, power supply from your car, your cigarette lighter that hooks up to your Anderson connector as well. Let me go ahead and show you all the sides of these and show you what the differences are that I've seen and uh, from this and other solar generators and then we'll do a few tests on it to see how it actually functions. Now let's start off with the top. On the top of this unit it has a small area where you can go ahead and put your wires. So you can put your wires in here and they all fit in there. You do have to do a little bit of uh, moving around if you want to fit the UPS wire in there because as you can see it's pretty thick but they all fit in there if you move it around it closes nice and tight it's pretty nice that you have a little spot to be able to store your extra cables so on the front ladies and gentlemen we've got our garden variety DC options we've got a cigarette lighter adapter we have an XT60 output we have a 12 volt 3 amp output actually we have two of those one of the good things about being able to use your DC options is that, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it uses less energy. When you're going through DC, you're using a little less energy than if you had to go use AC because the AC has to go through an inverter. So if you have lights or things like that that you can use for grid down situations, then you would probably be better off using DC instead of AC because it actually uses less energy. One thing that I like about this is this little light is right in the front, which is kind of nice. I do believe that the unit has to be on before you can start it, but let's check it out. I don't think I've tried starting that light or turning that light on with the unit being off. So it does. It has to be on, but we'll turn it on here in a minute. Now, taking a look at our other side, it comes with a couple of regular USB A's and this is one of the different things here that I'm going to show you in a second that I haven't seen on other solar generators. This one here instead of having a high power USB A usually like an 18 watt USB A it has three 20 watt USB C. So you got one here two and then there's one in the bottom and then there's a 100 watt USB-C output on this. So they got rid of the high output USB-A, the 18 watt. They gave you two regular ones, but then they gave you three of the USB-C 20 watts in addition to 100 watt. Now, one of the things that I've seen on this solar generator that is different from every other solar generator that I've ever reviewed is this. This is your input action. So this here allows you to tell this machine at what rate of watts you want the machine to charge up at when you're charging it off the wall outlet. So right here you can see that we have an option for 300 watts, 500 watts, 700 watts, 900 watts, and then 1100 watts over here. And it is just a turn. You know, it's just the knob that you turn up and down and you get to change it. Now, the only thing that I would say that may be a con about this is that what happens if this breaks and it breaks on 300 watts then unless you know how to fix it or can get it fixed then you're going to be stuck at charging this off of your wall at 300 watts all the times but it works just fine now to turn it on very simple just like anything else it's going to be a long press to the power button and then obviously you can hear that it turned on the fan momentarily turns on and it turns right off. And then you can see here that we've got our input, we've got our output. And you can see that we are at 90% charged right now. If any of you are sensitive to light, look away here in a second because I'm gonna turn this light on just to show you that it's pretty bright. So you can see that it has a high, it has an SOS, 
and then it just has a flash where it just continuously flashes. This is not a must have on any solar generator, but I think it's kind of nice to have it just in case because for example, where this solar generator is going to live is going to be powering my Toyo stove and that's at one of the far ends of my living room. So if the power goes out, it'd be just too easy for me to just turn this light on and believe it or not, this will light up our entire living room just enough so that we can see where we're walking and we don't trip over ourselves. Something else that I haven't seen, I mean, they could have done without this, but it doesn't really hurt. I guess if you put this in storage, it'd be nice to have a cover for your fan input and output. But this right here is a cover for your fan's input and output, and it stays open just like this if you open it. And you just want to make sure that whenever you're charging it or discharging it, using it for something, that this is open on both sides. It has one on the other side, and I will show you. Now, down here, it's our AC plugs and as you can see it comes equipped with six 20 amp plugs that you can pretty much plug any appliance into the back side doesn't have anything for us to talk about there's pretty much nothing back there ladies and gentlemen but here's the other side and this is the other side of the fan so you want to make sure that these are open on both sides before you use it either to charge or discharge now here is what you use in order to charge it off your wall all right all you have to do is just Plug this in and then plug the other end to your wall. And then this is your Anderson input connector that you use for solar. Now, we already talked about the max input off of your AC wall outlet for this unit, which is 1100 watts. The solar input is 500 watts. So you can input 500 watts at any one time on this machine if you're using solar panels. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't talk about the type of battery that this has. This comes with a lithium iron phosphate battery, which in my opinion is the best battery in the industry. I believe it's the safest. It will last the longest. So in addition to having the best battery in the industry, it has a carrying capacity of 2,048 watt hours, which means that if you charge it using an AC wall outlet, you can charge it as quickly as 1.5 hours and around four hours if you are using enough solar power to produce up to 500 watts. And as previously stated, the battery has a rated capacity of 3,500 plus charge and discharge cycles. This also has a 2,400 watt continuous output, which we're gonna test here in a minute. I've already conducted two or three tests with this that I'm gonna share with you as soon as I finish telling you the specifications. But so far, this unit has performed exactly how it's supposed to, exactly how they said that it would. And this does have a surge capacity of 4,600 watts, which in my opinion is pretty good for a model like this. This is not something that you can use in the cold. It will go all the way down to negative 10 degrees Celsius in the cold. Now, when I saw that negative 10, I got kind of excited. I was like, man, that's awesome. I can use it outside up to negative 10, but negative 10 degrees Celsius is not the same as negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit if you do the math. So this is not something that I would use outside during cold weather. And obviously that's not what I use solar generators for. I use them mainly to power those devices and appliances within my home whenever there's a grid failure. And sometimes in the summertime, whenever I'm doing work outside where it's not convenient to extend a power cord to, I'll grab one of my solar generators and go ahead and use my work tools with it as well. Those of you that have been following me for a while know that I always like to test my solar generators with my 25.5 cubic foot refrigerator first. And as you can see here, we started this test at 5.39 a.m. at 100% charge and ended it at 6.20 p.m. with about 22% left in the battery. So that's just shy of 13 hours with 22% left in the tank. All right, so here you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I have this in the UPS mode, uninterrupted power supply. And the way that you can tell that it's in this mode is this little icon right here. Let me see, let me show you what happens, excuse me, once I plug it out of the wall. See, it comes off. And now, let's plug it back in the wall. And there you go. You hear that? It came on. And to it, right now, I have my water heater or tea kettle whatever you want to call this thing plugged into it along with my toaster so our tea kettle base is already plugged in all we have to do is plug this in and you'll see that it turns on and it's not going to show any wattage output because right now it's just on 
I have it for 210 degrees. To turn it on, all we have to do is this right here. So right now, that is drawing 1,395 watts from this unit, but directly through to the grid. And since this machine has an uninterrupted power supply of, I believe it's 10 milliseconds, there's pretty much no disturbance in the operation of any appliance that you have plugged into it because of that UPS function. So this machine is probably going to end up living in the place of the Duracell that I have providing UPS to my Toyo stove right now. But let's see if we can get our wattage output up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on one of these toasters. And immediately you can see that the wattage output went up to just shy of 1800, 1750. Let's see if we can put it on high. And then I'm going to turn on my other toaster, the other side. And look at that, we're almost at max. Now I never recommend that you use a solar generator of any kind to power devices such as these because they draw out so much at the same time. And even though it's rated to do so, I just believe that you will preserve the battery for longer if you just draw out what you need instead of large amounts of wattage like this. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Fawcett Bot 2400. What do I say about it? I think it's a decent unit, very decent unit. If you're interested, if you're in the market for a solar generator, take a look at the link that I'm going to leave in the description of this video. Also, take a look at the link. I will also leave it in the pinned comment under this video as well. And I'll include a code that you can use to save a few dollars if you're interested in looking at this and if you're in the market for a solar generator. Again, thank you very much, Fawcettbot, for sending me this. Pretty good unit, pretty good solid unit. Do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it. Thank you very much for joining in, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day, and we will see you later on. God bless every one of you.